Welcome to my Saturday Night Live. I am your host, Ishmael Perez. I hope each and every single one of you is doing fantastic. I don't see anybody on the chat. Let me just check my channel to make sure I'm live. One second. Waking. Okay, I am live. Awesome. So I wanted to welcome everybody. Today is the 23rd of March. Um, as we approach, of course, the beginning of the new year, all right, spring is the beginning of the new year. Um, I do have a, a special guest today who has a lot of information regarding um, people that have been abducted by the military, uh, people that have been used in multidimensional um, realms. Um, hi. Oh, I do see some people here. Hi, Ishmael. Handpicked, waving. Welcome, Isis. Okay, so I'm starting to see some of the galactic Jedis come on. Thank you guys so much for being here. So I do have a special guest today. And before I get to her, I want to welcome each and every single one of you. For those that don't know me, my name is Ishmael Perez. I am the galactic historian, author of our cosmic origin and soon to come out the secret government revealing the secret history of the world. So today is the 23rd of March and an event that occurred on this very day, guys, is... The Stamp Act imposed on American colonies in the year 1765. So in an effort to raise funds to pay off debts and defend the vast new American territories won from the French in the Seven Years' War of 1756 and 1763, the British government passes the Stamp Act on March 22, 1965. The legislation levied a direct a direct tax on all materials printed for commercial and illegal use in the colonies, from the newspapers and pamphlets to playing cards and dice. Okay, so that's something that took place on this very, very day. Um, back in the year 1765, on the 22nd of March. All right, so one of the things that you guys, another thing I wanted to share that you guys perhaps didn't know about me is that I love recharging at least once a month I go to the mountains for a whole day, I turn off my phone, and I just connect with the elements. That's my way of recharging, that's my way of um, regenerating, that's my way of reconnecting with Mother Nature, the fundamental forces of the universe, and so on and so forth. So, um, also, um, as some of you might know, that I will be speaking at the Biomed Alien event here in Los Angeles coming up in about two and a half weeks. I believe it's from the 9th of April to the 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 of April. It's, I think, I believe it starts on the Thursday and it ends on a Sunday that weekend. So I'm probably going to be there Friday and Saturday because I will be doing a workshop. And get this, for those that attend, all you have to do is mention my name and you guys are going to get $200 off, $200 and $40 off. Instead of paying 300 and something dollars for the event, it'll for the whole weekend, it'll only be 60 bucks for the whole weekend. And you guys could attend anything you guys want. All right. Um, so just mention my name and you guys get two hundred and forty dollars off Ishmael Perez. If you guys attend the event now, I'm also going to be in San Rafael um, about a month from now on the 20 from the 19th to the 22nd. I believe the 19th of April to the 22nd. Again, it's on a weekend from a Friday to Sunday. I'm going to be speaking uh, or presenting rather at the New Living Conscious Expo in San Rafael, Northern California. So I'm also going to be there um and i believe i'm going to be speaking on a couple of panels so it's going to be awesome if if i get to, to meet some of the galactic jedis there all right so for the main event today my guest misha johnston is a speaker author and a certified hypno therapist specializing in multi-dimensional et experiencer regressions past life and parallel life regressions and trauma recovery hypnosis she offers galactic multidimensional sessions and is a trans channel who speaks many galactic light languages. In the year 1990, she founded the Star Family Contactee Support Group. In the year 1991, she started the first support group for teens, children, and their parents in the United States. She was the director of the Nevada UFO Contact Center International, the UFOCC, for the past 10 years, she has facilitated virtual experiencer support groups three times a week on Zoom and has a monthly group in her home. 
Misha, a third generation experiencer, having contact with eight different types of extraterrestrials, including my lab and MK Ultra. She had two eight months periods of missing time, including a marriage she had no memory of. Wow, that's intense. Um, she shares her story of her encounters in her books. She has spoken of many conferences within the Western states. She has been on many radio shows and she has appeared on European, Canadian and Russian TV. Uh, Misha has been featured on the new documentary, We Are Not Alone or Prime TV. All right. So what a, what a very in, interesting bio. Misha Johnson, welcome to my show. How are you doing, Misha? Hello, Israel. Nice to, nice to see you and thanks, everybody. And hello, everyone. <laughs> So, Misha, you've been doing this for quite some time. I mean, yeah. wow. Um, <laughs> you were married and have no recollection of that marriage. That really just kind of stung mm -hmm. well, That was one of the MK Ultra. So I was born into an MK Ultra family. That is a huge, long story. My father was my handler, and uh, he was also the one who did the um, base mind control on me. So it's it's a very long story, so I'm not going to go into it, but I will tell you that at age uh, 17, I was, um, it was graduating from school mm -hmm. and uh, you know, high school, and I was checking out college, and I was there on this open time where they have the open house type of thing. And while mm -hmm. I was there, a man walked up to me and said, um, to the group that I was with, there were three other kids, he said, uh, how would anybody like to make a lot of money? If you join our study, you'll make hundreds. I can't remember how much. Several hundred. I think it was like three or four hundred dollars. And uh, just for being on the study. And it's a dream study. So what we do is we'll just put you to sleep and we watch you while you dream. Um, because we know a lot of things happen during your dream. So I said yes. And the next day, just out just at the edge of the campus, I went to a brownstone building, a uh, brick building, went in, and the people were in lab coats. I thought, well, gee, it's doctors. These are good people. So I let them uh, hook me up and put me to sleep, and that was the last thing I remembered for, um, for, for eight months. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and the next thing I remember, I wake up, and I'm in a bus, mm -hmm. and I... Um, I see a name that is not mine. I see I see my first name, uh, and at that time I was called Mar Marsha, and I saw that name. And I but I didn't see. I saw the seven name Rose, and I thought, what the heck? I I don't understand what's going on. So, through all through that trip, long trip back to um, back to Idaho, I was having all kinds of memories come and go. Some of them false memories, some of them real memories, and then when I got there i called my family and they came to pick me up at the at the bus station and they says for the love of hey where have you been we have been worried sick you've been gone ever since you went to the college open house and i said i have no idea i just ended up on this bus in seattle washington i, I don't know and so anyway they said well, we haven't seen you since you got married, and and Charles took you off. And I said, I got what? <laughs> I, I got married. I had no idea I'm ever getting married. And they proceeded to tell me how it was very odd that I'd only been gone for like ten. Uh, let me see. They they started missing me. Uh, I would start. I went there Jan January. 12th or 10th maybe it was and then I got a message they got a message from me that said that I called them and said I'm going to get married and I'm marrying a Navy Marine corpsman who's uh, um, who's going to be a doctor and put this in the paper and I'll let you know when I'm going to get married mm. they talked to me and evidently I was not receptive at all and then they, uh, then they got a message just a few days after that I was to be married on the 14th of February. Mm -hmm. That's Valentine's, yeah. Yeah, for, <laughs> that on, on, that, isn't that ironic? I didn't really realize that until just now. Um, and so 
they came down to the wedding. My parents tried to talk me out of it. And I was very nasty and ornery. And, and he said, I'm not going to walk you down the aisle. And, uh, and I said, I don't care. The, my friends have walked me down the aisle. They're the ones who gave me my wedding dress. And it's wrong this wedding. I don't care. Mm. So I was just really nasty. It wasn't me. It was not me. And in, in a regression, uh, several years, maybe about probably about 20 years ago now I had a regression and my therapist has asked me what happened why don't you remember your wedding and uh, another altar came through and said it's not her wedding it's my wedding and I'm Darlene and she's not she's supposed to be asleep so that's what happened so they put you in such a state it's called the driving program where they can program you can mind control you they so for eight months i had complete missing time oh my gosh and a missing marriage that i still don't remember to this day i don't remember what he looked like or anything about it is this generational has any other member in your family has had a contact other than yourself <laughs> Well, yes, like I said, my father was part of that program um, and he was, and members of my family as well, two of my siblings definitely have had it. One was ended up, uh, they both oddly died at 77 um, and the long story short with them, one was in the uh, project, uh, military government projects, he was a um, ex-military and then went into private projects uh, and he, it was called looking glass mm -hmm. my sister was uh, also she was in the uh i should say model program which is called the beta program which is the uh um presidential models and stuff where i end up at, ended up eventually as well mm. so that's the that's the ugly mk ultra stuff and I worked long and hard to get rid of that and not be a victim and uh, and get through it. You know, about 18 regressions it took um, to to finally get all of the truth and get cleared and healed from it and such. So, you know, my mission is my groups. That's what it is. My hypnosis sessions, working with people. But I will. I'm open to any question you have. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you mentioned that you had this altar that came through that actually was the person who got married instead of you. Um, mm -hmm. How many altars do you think you have? Well, I have, I have quite a few, what I call floating altars, but I have four main altars, which I know three of their names. Um, I don't know the fourth one. But uh, I have floating altars, so we, people can have up to you know a hundred altars. I I can't tell you how many I have. I just know that each time they build an altar, that uh, this is the um, this is MK Ultra, the part of the My Lab program, is all, all of that. Um, they will so they have an altar. So I did say the name Darlene, so it's okay. I'll say that name. That's the only one I'll go ahead and say, but. Darlene um, has an all, has other altars that will uh, help her um, shoot guns, use knives, fight hand hand combat. So these are those floating altars that are within every single altar that you have. I've done the research with uh, other many many regressions with people, and that's how I've come to the the absolute decision that that's what's happening um so you have your main altars and then you have all these extra altars so once you can clear up your main altars and and um you know re integrate them mm -hmm. then you have won the battle because the other ones will just follow along mm -hmm. very fascinating um now have you ever had a group abduction experience Oh yeah, my family and I had a group abduction together. Uh, so we're going way back to when I was nine years old and we were driving on a vacation. We were in Montana and we were about to go. Uh, it was getting dusk and uh, my mother looked up when I said, for the love of Pete Rogers, what is that? And we all looked up and it was a UFO. 
this UFO was a saucer, like two two plates on top of each other. And it was about as close as if you put your thumb out in front of you. So it was quite close. And it was following along with us. And then all of a sudden, it just zipped off. And later that night, um, we were driving up the this hill that was way before there was freeways, driving up this very curvy hill. And uh, the last thing I remember is bright lights in the car. And the next thing I remember is my father screaming and coming to a halt on the other side, on the opposite side of the mountain at the bottom. And I'm holding on to the steering wheel and said, I don't know how we got here. I have no idea. I don't remember. So I did a regression work on that and I found out that our entire family was abducted. And it was the car mm -hmm. up and taken and put over there. And of course, I did have a, um, some memories about my own, but I did remember seeing my brother in the table next to me and then knowing that my other, the rest of my family had had contact as well. Now, I don't think that was a really negative one. I think they might even, they might even have been a positive group, but I had good experiences with my ETs. Majority of my ET experiences have been very positive. Um, but whenever the my lab experiences was involved, uh, which I am on my lab, then it became more negative and uh, different types of grays, different types of aliens. Now, for some of the listeners that are probably new to my channel and uh, don't know what a my lab is, um, Misha, can you describe what a my lab is, please? Okay, so my lab or me lab stands for military laboratory. <clears throat> Excuse me, military laboratory or military reabduction. So that means um, with many people who are experiencers, they're watched by a shadow government. And especially when they are abducted and taken off, they will have revisits, reabductions from men in black uniforms or aliens as well. I've had abductions by raised and taken into the deep underground military bases. Uh, I've uh, been abducted by reptilians and taken into the bases um, and humans in black uniforms and night vision goggles taken into the military bases. So mm -hmm. they, they want to either interrogate you, which they do a lot of interrogation because they want to know why they choose you, what special abilities do you have, uh, what where did you go? What did you do? What is the what is the uh, the uh, ship? How does it run? Uh, you know, uh, so different questions like that. So the way I see it is, is there is like three levels of the military and the deep underground military base. So you've got uh, let's say Area Fifty One. You've got the top that top level, which are back engineered things. And then you get into the second level with some other kinds of secret things. And then you get into the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way down. You get to different levels of ETs. And I have been on these levels where uh, out of Area 51 and in California at, at Pendleton, uh, that the ETs are in charge of that level. Mm -hmm. charge. And the military people or the lab people keep their distance and they don't even like if it's a reptilian they don't even look at a reptilian because i had a specific experience about that yeah tell us tell us about that because uh i've heard that for many people it's it's very terrifying um you know when they encounter the reptilians yeah well okay i went to sleep next thing i do i woke up in a uh, definitely what which was a deep underground military base and I was walking on this hall there was uh, somebody next to me and I could tell and smell and feel and sense who it was because one of the reasons they have abducted me for so many years was because I interface and I communicate with aliens mm. um, so I can telepathically or I can actually galactic language and verbally communicate with them so um he was a big reptoid walking next to me. I could smell him. I knew he was there. The people in the military uniforms, lab coats would be passing by me and they'd look at me, but never look at him. And I asked him, I says, 
why don't they look at you? They look at me, but they don't look at you. Why? And then he shows me and first says, because they know better, they must honor us. This is our base. And and he says, um, then he shows me this image of a man being drug away like he's crazy. He's screaming and carrying on like he's gone nuts. He looked in his eyes and another person just being arrested for looking at his direction. So they yeah. don't. Uh, allow that they are in charge and then later on i'm not sure if that experience or another experience because there were quite a few of them uh was i was in a, a room and there was a reptilian standing at the door i should say a reptoid because the, to me there's reptilian reptoids and re alpha draconians mm -hmm. so in the in deep underground base that i've had uh experiences which I consider Alpha Draconia and the Reptoids. The Reptilians, I, I have not, uh, and I'll explain why I say that. So um, he's, I'm, I'm looking at him and I said telepathically to him, why are you invading our planet? Well, what did we do to you? And he said, you're not the invaders, we are. And then he shows me this image of all these um, um, Comets coming down and they're hitting this area where it's all prehistoric. There's dinosaurs. There's all kinds of prehistorics uh, that are running, running, running. And he said, and we are the smaller and the smarter ones that went in their inner earth and have evolved before you see, and evolved to who you see before you, is exactly what he said to me. So, you know, I know I've heard that the reptilians have been around a long time so um you know i don't i don't know i uh it made me look about it look at it a different way for well sure. i i heard that physically speaking uh they arrived uh here about 500 million years ago and developed the uh you know jurassic era right the right. dinosaur era and all that stuff mm -hmm. and from what i do know is that the guardian alliance said no, no 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 that planet's supposed to be inhabited by humans let's send an asteroid destroy the reptoid denoid um re, you know rep, reptilian population as it was known back then uh -huh. and reset hum, and restart human um restart civilization but with humans so from what i understand is that yes the galactic federation was involved in the uh the destruction of the triassic era yeah that's, well that's what they, they're I, still holding a grudge about that Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah, yeah, because he was really ticked off about that, and and um, you know he said it's an extinction event, and uh, to me, and so that was kind of interesting. And then uh, another time, I had our experience with a draconian. So I'll just go ahead and tell that one before we can go on out of the my lab and the deep underground military base. This was in California, and this was. Um, 1999, when uh, I'd just been on um, the Art Bell Dreamland, it's not Dreamland, I can't remember what Art Bell's show was called at that time. Coast to Coast? Yeah, thank you. Coast to Coast. Yeah, it was Coast to Coast, and uh, he was not there. I, I George Siegel uh, interviewed Melinda Leslie and I, and then um, the next night, she, she stayed at my house because... Um, we were working on a conference that we we're going to be speaking at and some things. So that night we were abducted out of, uh, out of there, um, out of the house. Um, my memory is after, well, you, you don't have a memory of this kind of thing. I will tell you uh, what you do is you have a weird feeling and you try to figure out. I thought I was trying to figure out why my coffee table was broken and she was sleeping on my couch. And so, um, she didn't know. I didn't know. She went back home, and I I started feeling icky, and that's the thing you'll feel really weird. And so I I got my hypnotherapist, and I had a session, and found out that we had been taken in the middle of the night by men in black uniforms and night vision goggles. He had grabbed me on each arm and drug me down the stairs of the condo and put me in a van, and for her. She found out, she because she had a regression too, and she found out that uh, they had done the same thing to her. But 
she had lost her balance and hit my coffee table and cracked it. Mm. So that's how my coffee table. They took us to the Pendleton. I think Pendleton, she thinks another base, but they took us there. And then they, um, the next thing I remember um, is waking up on um, a table and I mean, I actually wasn't really a table. It was more like a, just a, it was a table. It was a table. But anyway, all of a sudden this uh, military guy's running back, yelling back and forth. He's screaming, cussing, and telling me, why are you talking? Why are you being on a radio show? And you got to stop this. You've been uh, warned, and which I had, and warned over and over again to stop it. So um, he said, to bring get the point home to you, how serious I am, I want you to meet somebody and in drops this draconian and this draconian was much bigger than the other ones he was thicker he had toughy looking things that might have been uh vestiges of wings i guess and he had a uh, more sharp edged kind of uh, uh things on his face and he looked in my eyes and showed this hologram and a hologram of my family, my my two sons, my daughter-in-law, and my granddaughter, and how they were being torn and cut to pieces in front of me. Holograms. Holograms, if you are, have ever seen holograms, they're real. You feel like you're right there. You're standing there. You can hear it. You can feel it. It can sense it every way. And, uh, and then, um, then I went out again and... Uh, she had very much the similar kind of experience. So uh, I, at that point, was about ready to give up and, and on everything because we were writing a book about uh, military, uh, with ex-military, ex-special forces, all kinds of people who experienced the group and everything. And we were going to tell the true story about the MyLab and the abductions and the MK Ultra. And they were not liking it. So three automobiles, accidents in six months, and a lot of warnings. Uh, and this was the final warning they said. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty scary to you know be in the uh, presence of a Draco, from what I've heard. Um, now, you mentioned that you also encountered positive benevolent ETs. Do mm -hmm. you remember who they are? What they looked like? Perhaps even names of commanders. Um, well, I will tell you that because I was being abducted in the my lab program, I went to the council. I was actually I was asking how I'm going to get out of this. I want to get out of this. I want to stop this. And I was in front of a council. Uh, the next thing I knew, and I was telling them I want to come home, and they said you have a mission. Do you not remember you asked for this mission? You must complete it. And they said, um, but we will, we have sent you a helper, a protector. Mm -hmm. and it was, oddly enough, a reptilian. It really? takes a reptilian to scare a reptilian, shall we put it that way? Because later on, um, after this council and at the council I have that, they can read about it in my book. But um, uh, after, well, quite a bit after that, maybe maybe five or six years after that was my first time I ever seen him. I know I was having contact. There were experiences with him, but I found out that he was a Syrian reptilian and that he had been sent from the council. They told me that they sent him to, uh, to protect me. And he protected not only me, but my family. And we never had any more abductions again. Yeah, and I can confirm and validate that uh, some of the reptilians that sought refuge in Sirius, they went there for a reason. They went there to uh, to disalign themselves from the you know from the self service to self reptilian or Draco mentality, mm -hmm. and to really just join the alliances of worlds, uh, the Galactic Federation of Worlds back then. So I, I could attest to that that a very small portion. Uh, I don't want to you know generalize, but there is a minority of reptilians that are actually working with the Galactic Federation of Free Worlds. Yeah. You know, the ones that come from Sirius. Now I do want to make an extinction. The Draconians from Alpha Draconis and the Hydra Draconians um, that come from the uh, Orion uh, constellation, those are the nasty ones. Those are the ones we should watch out for, guys. 
<laughs> you know, there, there are two types of reptilians. And um, you mentioned the greys. Um, I heard that they're like uh, programmed life worms in a way that they're very robotic and, and that they're only doing the bidding of the draconians. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the greys? Um, well, I'll start with the first grace I had experience with. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that they, they were non-emotional and they were very small. But these particular ones look more like what you would consider, I would consider um, a fetus look to them versus the later ones that I had an experience with that were more the robotic ones. But these came to me when I was very young and I it was my experiences were happening so often that I'd see them at the window and at the window they looked just like to me a deer like three deer standing at the window with their big old deer eyes and I said oh the deer's are here it's time to go <laughs> and <laughs> and so I, I was that was around five ish six years old prior to that I had a very unusual experience with some very cool, great. They were my best friends. They ended up being my invisible friends mm -hmm. um, that, that would come and visit me. But they, oddly enough, were furry. Uh, and uh, it's a long story how I met them, but I'll just tell you that I met them underneath the stairs one night because I'd heard them sound, their sounds and things. And so I went there and they were furry. They had little brown eyes. Um, they had little kind of button type nose. So I called them, at, and this was at three years old, I called them BGs, the bears. I thought they were bears. And um, when I grew up and saw Star Wars and saw the Ewoks, I got to tell you, that was my BGs. And I've met several other people who've had the same experience now. So they were very positive. They took me levitating over the roofs and like I thought flying. And in fact, they did show me how to levitate. And um, they were my invisible friends for years until I was six years old. And then that's when the tall white being who you might consider a gray, but I don't because he's not a gray at all. He's got a smaller head, a more of a teardrop head. He has um, white like a alabaster skin, just very white skin with iridescent things, colors in it, kind of. Um, and um, he was, shall we say, he had these um, beings that were more robotic, more little robots, non-emotional. Um, and uh, so I'd say that the, my, that's two different gray types there. And then, of course, the ones in the deep underground base that I have experienced. So the ones in the underground base also had no emotions and looked a whole lot like, well, I'll tell you, the Draconian and the grays look like um, um, that movie. I'm trying to think of the movie. Oh, my goodness. During, um Jupiter ascending. Jupiter ascending. Yeah, yes. Picking up on your energy. <laughs> yes, that is it. That is it. And and the grays were like that too. They didn't climb walls, but they were fast like that. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Now, any messages over the years of uh, interacting with extraterrestrials? Any messages that uh, that you might have received from them? Well, lots of messages in the last ten years, but. Anything that we should be aware of, that we should know about? Well, I will tell you that the tall, white, willowy one, mm -hmm. um, one, actually there was uh, more in that ship that time, but there were these, best thing I can explain, but they were pictures. I mean, first of all, it was a, it was space window, and then all of a sudden there were hologram-like screens that were there, and they were doing this very fast, start from earth and all the uh, ecological disasters and and all and all and all and all until they came to the end where there was just shall we say burnt out earth from eco ecological disasters maybe wars too and they said is this the earth you choose to be on 
uh, to live on, excuse me, is this the church uh, the earth you choose to live on? And I said, no, it's not. And, um, you know, I have, that was to me a, a really important message that we had to save our earth. Um, and other messages, let me think. What about, especially regarding the future, like anything that they said about the future? I was shown an image that the galactics will at some point come um, and that in fact in this particular image they were they were there were ships up in, in the sky there were children running towards the ship and there were adults who were screaming and running away um, and they said that um, that this is a time of great change and this is um this is the actually these are hybrids are coming back now i know that how i've heard your thing about hybrids and stuff but i do believe that some of the hybrids that are here and that are uh that we have out there are positive part of the galactics the pleiadians the syrians um and and lyrans as well but uh all of the hybrid, uh, the children were hybrids and they were really happy that they were happening and the people were scared and they were running. And they said, this is a time of great change and, and we're the bridge between your civilization and our civilization. And when the time of great change comes, we will come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do think that's the fifth, uh, you know, the fifth world, the fifth. But the prophecies have been talking about. Pretty much the next golden age. Golden age, yeah. Oh, Seventh yeah. golden age, according to the esoteric tradition. Mm -hmm. um, pretty fascinating. Now, you mentioned hybrid programs. Um, some of the hybrids are here on Earth. Would you say that some of the hybrids are the people that are considered star seeds? Are what part of the programs? I believe so. But unfortunately, there's also other kinds of hybrids too here. Mm -hmm. but I do know that they yes, are the, the star seeds. They're, they're you know the boots on the ground, shall we say, and they're here and they live. Um, I should say we have lived these li these lives here to learn how it is to be human, and with the with the hybrids that are because. In my hybridization and other people in my age, I think it's a completely different than the children probably in the last 20 years, maybe even more than 20 years. But I believe they are the hybrids and they're the ones that we're, that, um, kind of we're waiting, we're waiting for. I mean, we are the ones we're waiting for, but they are the ones that um, will be in important places uh, of uh, importance, uh, you know, maybe in politics or whatever it is but they're going to make a change they're going to help that's my belief sounds um right now you mentioned that you have had a uh, missing time can you recall uh, anything or can you tell us about like what how did you come to discover that you had missing time like what happened that made you realize that well the first one <laughs> first one was a, a marriage i didn't remember mm -hmm. um, but then the second one was the following year, and that was um, also another eight-month missing period of time. So I know that was the MK Ultra. So that's those two are that kind of missing time. But the other missing times are things like you're traveling, mm -hmm. and you arrive someplace several hours late, or you arrive someplace where something takes three hours to drive, and you've made it there an hour and a half. Um, so there's different, I've had both kinds. I've had group missing times where we were missing, had missing times right outside of Area 51. And somebody then, just asked, uh, where's the proof for Area 51 on the chat? Oh, really? Okay. Uh, uh, the proof for Area 51 is Area 51 is um, a, a secret base that was put. I know it's been there for a long time, but um, Area 51 has at least eight levels. I've been on what I consider probably the seventh and the eighth level, mm -hmm. with the gray level and the draconian, uh, uh, not draconian, reptoid level. But 
They may have another level under that, but somewhere around that. Uh, I know that I was there. Uh, I was, one particular time I was in an elevator going down, down, down. There was a man in a uniform, a, a black uniform with a gun. He was like, nobody home. His eyes were all glazed over, basically. When the elevator stopped, because we went down a lot of floors, when the elevator stopped, um, the doors opened. He kind of woke up and started put, putting, pushing everybody out. At the same time, somebody was pushing from behind. They split the group into two. I was in a group that was going over with the ones in the uniform and the lab coats. And um, the other group, I saw my 14-year-old grand, excuse me, 14-year-old son was there, and he was. Had, they were setting, heading that group over to a tall beige gray beans. Mm -hmm. uh, so Area 51, like I said, has, has at least seven, eight levels. It has. It's several hundred miles. It reaches all the way into Arizona, um, Utah, and um, and California, and it is all underground. It's an yeah. underground with a a uh, the train. A bullet train. I heard it was like a bullet train that connects all right. the bases, like over three hundred bases. World. I mean, in the U.S. alone, in the US. thousands of them worldwide. Right, they do. They do. And so if you want, it's one of the biggest bases. But there are other bases. There are other bases. And some even go underneath the, uh, the ocean and the water. Yeah, I heard about that too. Because there's also uh, extraterrestrial civilizations that live within our oceans. Exactly. Many of them. Many. Now, since you've been all the way to level six and seven in, in, in the Area 51 base, um, other than the reptilians and the greys, did you see any other type of extraterrestrials in person? I saw a raptor looking thing, uh, like it looked like it could be a child, but it was, I was smaller, it was much smaller than the, the reptoids. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course I saw uh, that beige gray and then, um, that's it. No, that's no. Okay. no, I, as far as like humans, um, in those lower things, um, I don't think that the galactic has anything to do with that. I think the galactic may have connections within our parts of our government, but not our shadow government. Yeah, yes. From what I heard, that the the Galactic Federation of Worlds, well, now the Galactic Alliances, they have been reorganized, have nothing to do with the shadow government. They only work with certain key individuals and from what i understand they also work with earth alliance but the, the function of our government which we would call the white hats from what i understand mm -hmm. like cheyenne mountain and stuff you know mm -hmm. with the different commanders like valiant thor and you know some of the pleiadians commander cortec commander soltec uh and in many others of course that are you know involved in the uh, liberation of planet earth mm -hmm. i think that i have I've been on board ships where I saw commanders, but I, other than a lifetime where I was a commander, another lifetime when I was an ET commander, I have not, I guess I'm not privy to that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have no recollection that we are, you know, since according to quantum physics, everything's still existing simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, because there is no time I, I think a lot of us still have a version of ourselves that uh are uh commanders and generals of these fleets <laughs> yeah yeah and and i and i know that absolutely means and I'm, with hypnosis sessions that i've had with a lot of people we that comes up all the time and if you are a commander there they're still they still consider you a commander in, in that energy uh, here, even though we've taken a human life. Uh, I see what you mean. Well, tell us about some of these hybrids that you've seen on the ships. Um, okay. I'll tell you about my experience. Okay. So, um, my first contact was, um, I've taken aboard a ship and this was my tall white ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I was handed a baby and this was like a, by a nursemaid. I was handed this baby, this very little scrawny baby, very big eyes, big head, a big, big 
big head, kind of pointy chin, and uh, I immediately knew it was mine, and I was bonding with it, and they telepathically told me that they felt that this was a success, and that they showed me how other people had been handed the babies, and some dropped them, some backed off, wouldn't touch them. Um, one man dropped it, I should say, and it backed off. A, a woman, women have it also. So they were happy that I accepted the baby. So the next experience I had was, I was um, okay. So I was in. This is when I saw Ayana. Oh, anyway, Ayana was my protector, who also, interesting enough, have I had lives with before. So um, I even had a reptilian life in Sirius, as well as I had human lives. But at any rate, um, he um, they used genetics from him and the all, they call it, to, uh, to, to give me a presentation of a little reptilian hybrid child. Uh, I, I know that probably doesn't fit right for you because it is, you know, but I don't think it was negative. I know with uh, your feeling on the hybrids, and but maybe that could be the, during the, the uh, uh, Anunnaki and all of that time. I don't know. But, but anyway, I didn't think it was a negative being at all. It was very sweet and cute and nice. And um, then I had experience with some others. Uh, uh, where I was in a room once and there were a lot of children different ages uh, they all had different kind of different hues of color of skin they weren't like really bright blues or greens they were lighter colors um, they um, all were very very slender very slender except for the the um, reptilian one but mm. Were very slender, and I asked, I said, well, who, who, which one's mine? <laughs> because they, I'd been presented with uh, other ones, you know, and I said, which one's mine? And they said, they all are. So that was like about 17 kids. Of you have 17 kids, I see. Oh, that's a small amount compared to a lot of hybrid mothers. Uh, how many Earth women surrogates do you think are out there? Is it in the hundreds, thousands, or millions that are contributing their eggs to the hybrid programs? Okay, the number that comes to me is the thousands. Thousands. So there's thousands of women out there that have been used. And then each one could have anywhere from 10 to 20 um, hybrid or children hybrids. Uh, so there's probably a good, would you say, hundreds of thousands of hybrids out there already? I'm asking. They said that's close. Okay, okay. Now, since you have uh, been um, regressing uh, people that have been in the programs, uh, accessing their altars, uh, and even uh, parallel lives, what if some? Of, what are some of the things that have come through that um, that um, is is you know it's important to know? Like anything, like the wildest thing that ever came through, perhaps. <laughs> I will tell you that um, a lot of past not past life, it's parallel lives have come through. It's not past lives, but we call them past, but it's parallel lives that we have. Mm -hmm. come through for people who are actually building planets. I mean, making planets, making universes. They are amazing things happening. Uh, there are people who are um, angels, seraphim angels, positive, and they are fighting some of the the negative uh, um, angels. I mean, that's that's happened on a lot, a lot in different ways. The secret space program and, uh, and all of that is is definitely immense. It's huge, um, and the different programs. Um, okay. I had um, I've had James Rink on my show about a month and a half ago, and and he postulated a very very um, he threw out a number, not a number, I'm sorry. He stated that every star seed or everybody out here that is a star seed is part of the programs, whether they know it or not. How accurate was he 
or do they have altars? Well, I, I, I'm not going to say accurate or not. My experiences with the many, uh, way over a thousand regressions, is there's a mix. Some are and some are not. Not all of them are secret space program. Not all of them are um, part of those programs. There are some that are not. There are some that are just contactees. And they've had experiences where they they came to this world as a starseed on their mission. And they get visits from their ETs. But no, they weren't. I don't believe that is correct. So you don't think every starseed has, has been part of some sort of a program where they've been mind wiped and have no recollection? No. Okay. No, I do not. A good percentage, would you say a good percentage of the star race down here in human form? Like the hybrids on Earth. What is, are you asking me? I missed that. Oh, I'm saying, is there a good percentage though? Would you say that? Um, that oh, yes, there's a lot. There's a lot of people who have been taken into the programs. I mean, including myself, and I'm getting slowly into it and understanding some things about it. But I can understand mine because I was in the MK altar to begin with. But I, um, I do believe that um, there is still uh, um, probably at least maybe a little over half. A little over half of the star seeds on human on planet Earth have been part of the programs. Is what you're saying? A little over half. Um, it seems so, and I'll tell you why. Is because maybe those are the only ones that are coming to me, though. I have okay. to say, I'm going on my regressions. I'm going on that, um, and with the majority of my regressions have been a, lo a lot about the secret space program and all of that. So. Maybe, you know, I, I wouldn't say that that happens to be. That's just in my regressions. A little over half are are like sixty percent are 60%. They, yeah sixty percent are um, have had some kind of uh, um, abductions in either in the uh, the my MK Ultra the my lab experiences are all the way up into the six, six, secret space program and super soldier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, um, since you do are, you know, you're involved with a lot of different groups that have, um, which you provide, you know, communities for when it comes to uh, healing their trauma, um, accessing information through re regression. Can you name uh, who comes into your meetings, such as like, you know, certain star seeds, extraterrestrial experiences, my lab, super soldiers, and who else uh, attends your groups? Like, you know, anybody in mind you're to ask me for names yes like no, people. I names it's private oh it's private okay yeah it's yeah. private and everything that goes on there is private we don't record it or anything like that so i can't but i will tell you this mm -hmm. the big names that you've heard have popped into the groups here and there mm -hmm. so uh and all as well as being hypnotized by, you know, by me so Yes, there is a lot of them. There's a lot of people who are talking about uh, being uh, in the secret space program, um, super soldiers, targeted individuals, um, because I have a target individual group just for them. And I will, I've got veteran group too. And in the veterans group, a lot of the super soldiers come to the veterans group too, or some, you know, some of them. So uh, throughout the years, I've been doing it for 10 years. So at, at any day when I have a group, there's going to be at least, let's say there's 12 people in a group. Mm -hmm. Out of that group of 12 people, at least a little over half of them are going to have some kind of connection to that those projects. Mm, interesting. Now, you did mention targeted individuals. So what advice can you give uh, anyone that is being targeted um, perhaps with scalar energy uh, weapons or otherwise? Well, in our group, there's many people who give different things that you can do, different technology you can use, different crystals you can use, different mantras you can use. So there's many different things. When they started targeting me, which they targeted me most specifically, uh, 
in on in in Las Vegas where I live, they put me in the hospital twice. Um, and then when they were talking to me before, um, they um, that was you know the 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 whole thing with chasing me and not following me and you know the accidents and stuff like that. So the psychotronic weapon they do use. So there's, in my opinion, if you can stand in your power, and I'm not saying this. I don't want to get anybody angry at me, but if you can stand in your power and see who you really are, you can stop it from happening. You can use some other devices, you know, the different kinds of things, and but you can stop it. I truly believe it. I did. I you can, or at least make it so they don't do it day in, day out, day in, day out. You know. I agree, my sister. We we do have the abilities. Uh, and the power to stop and you know protect ourselves from these these unwanted attacks. Now, mm -hmm. can you, um, what can you access as you do a regression, such as people seeing visions of ETs or any memories from the secret space programs? Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Sure. What can you access as you do regression, such as people seeing visions of ETs or any memories from secret space programs? Oh, okay. So for the person, what they can access? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. They get into their, uh, their higher self, their subconscious, and we can put them in, I can put them in a theta state. They go into that theta state. They can access past lives. Uh, they can access the life before they came here, the life that put them in the mission here. They can access um, their experiences, their childhood experiences. They can access uh, trauma that happened to them when they were a child. Maybe, um, you know, if they were kidnapped and taken into the programs and awful things done to them, they can access all of these kinds of things. Um, there's really no limit to what your subconscious knows. Your subconscious is the Akashic Records for you. And they can go into anything and as long as you can connect with your higher self and close off and quiet down that conscious mind. Because the conscious mind sometimes will come in and try to draw a picture or make an, and make something up. And I always use different techniques, you know, body codes, mm -hmm. pendulums and things like that to make sure that people aren't getting pulled away by their conscious mind and that they they're getting false memories now i've heard that um the the, the people that abduct you know uh, experiencers not experiencers but people that are part of the programs that have these altars these different altars that they use certain trigger words or do they actually okay. use like frequency uh weaponry how do how do they alter them from one uh personality to the next they can use frequency that's what we talk about with the uh the uh, sleepers mm -hmm. and sleepers who come into um, hotels and shoot people, or schools and shoot people, they can act them psychotronically. I see. They also okay. buy a word, but uh, they when they access me, they put a phrase on me when they ex would access me and take me back into the program. So they have access words, they have access frequencies, they have number frequency or access codes. There's many different things, depending upon which projects you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, the secret space programs are number codes mostly. Right, yeah, I'm familiar with that. And then they have like so many generation super soldiers that, you know, that began in the 1950s, I believe, or even earlier, I think 1940s was one of their first programs. Well, here in the States, of course, we know that the uh, the Germans had a program since the 1930s, as early as 1930. They did, right. Yeah. Went to Antarctica there. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, well, tell us, what do you know about Antarctica? I mean, it's, there's so much to unravel there and there's just, it seems like all eyes are on Antarctica right now. Okay, what I know isn't from any knowledge that I have gathered from anything. So what it would be was my, my, my perception and what I've heard and what I think is the truth. That's where I'm coming from. So I feel that uh, that isn't uh, one of the entrances to the inner earth at one. 
But there's also, we got the Antarctica, so that would probably be the polar. Uh, um, but the Antarctica itself, I do believe they've got some ships in there. I do believe that they have technology, um, um, that they have some um, aliens in stasis, um, and there's, it's all, and, it, and Antarctica is also the place where some of the psychotronic weaponry is coming from, probably most oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, I've heard uh, Base 2 211. Uh, which is pretty much the nefarious base occupied by by the uh, by the Germans. But I, I also heard that uh, recently, Base Two Eleven was actually recuperated by Solar Warden and the Earth Alliance. Good. Yeah, which which is awesome. Yeah, it's it's like they're they're competing to see who could uh, get to to the uh, all of that technology that is hidden deep within the layers of Antarctica. Um, but I believe that the Earth Alliance has already won. I think they, they got to that technology before the dark side did. Otherwise, if they would have gotten to that technology uh, before the you know, Earth Alliance, there would have been dire situations on the Earth, I heard. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yes. Our Earth Alliance, um, uh, there's so many galactic groups that are assisting and, and helping us. And I do believe that they're, they're, they're making a difference. And absolutely this is um so many 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 bases i believe have already gone especially the ones that with the darker uh agendas shall we say yeah and the only reason these these um creatures that they have or these ets that are in stasis and some of them are actually giants the only reason they're not they're not waking up is because the earth alliance got to them before the cabal from what i understand the cabal was going to use some sort of a uh, some sort of a gadget, advanced technology, of course, given by the Dracos to actually uh, trigger their their uh, from their sleep to okay. their awakening, tr trigger them from their sleep state of mind to the awakening state of mind, where they were gonna, you know, obviously snap out of these chambers. And their idea was for one final battle, release the Nephilim, you know, wreck havoc across the earth. But no, that that timeline has been altered, which yeah. is really good, <laughs> as well as the uh, you know the uh, um, Z as in zebra, O M B, right? B I E time. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but yeah. you know, yeah. Yes, yes, it has. It has. Of that. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's this would be a completely different world if these okay. last two timelines were had not happened. Where where I'm very thankful, and I I see really wonderful things ahead for us. Yeah. I, Truly, the Galactics are coming in, speaking like you know uh, messages to us, and I, I, I believe that um, I can't give a year. I I won't do that actually, but I do believe it's in my lifetime. Let me say that. Oh yeah, by far. By far, yeah. By far, in our and all of our lifetimes, everyone here on this chat is going to witness the transitioning into the seventh golden age of enlightenment, the age of Aquarius um do you know what year um, uh, i don't want to give years but i i've always believed that the that the events that were going to trigger that were going to somehow uh be in 2024 but again you know we are the okay. biggest cme ever um is expected uh sometime in 2025 but i believe that there's going to be some sort of uh like a domino effect that's going to be triggered in 2024 that's going to lead to that perhaps mm -hmm. you know shift of the ages by no later what you know within the year i would say but I, again i don't want to i don't want people to quote me on this i don't i don't want 25 to come 2025 to come and people say oh ishmael said that by 2025 it would be in the age of aquarius but right. that's what i've been feeling and then again you know 2024 um sometime this year in the summer we're going to be seeing or even in april due to the fact that there is going to be uh, an unprecedented solar event like mm -hmm. never before. They're saying that this time the uh, energy is coming in or it's due to the fact that it's it's also with, you know, the 11 year cycle of the sun with, you know, solar minimum uh, jump or transitioning into solar maximum. Um, and then in terms of astrology, is it Pluto going into Aquarius or what do they call it? I don't know. Well, I, I don't do astrology. I don't well, yeah, all these things are aligning sometime in the next few weeks. So, you know, I think that that's what's going to um, 
trigger the the domino effect that will lead to some sort of a you know huge huge uh transition in the next year yeah. or less or less now um i i believe that we'll see ets here and by and in 2026 i i my galactics talk about that but they also say that our civilization has a way of try of, of trying to change things and um that you know they will try to change things let's put it that way the darker yeah i I've, I've heard something like that as well um so tell us about the book that you were writing with melinda leslie oh well that book actually ended up <laughs> Gee whiz, guess what? I don't have any books here. Uh, um, hang on. Uh, I don't have the book here. Uh, I thought I did have books here, but I don't. So it um, it is about, it was all about the MK Ultra, um, the, my lab experiences. So my particular book, I ended up writing the book that we never got to write, right? But unfortunately i would already when i quit for nine years which i did i quit for nine years uh i gave all my stuff to melinda and uh all of the cassettes and everything our interviews so that book never got written someday maybe melinda will write it i hope and or maybe you know cassettes <laughs> it's really hard to listen to cassettes nowadays so i don't know for sure but i thank you I'm the one in the one here. All right. So I ended up um, writing this book called Covert Abduction. It is military harassment, surveillance, interrogation, and mind control within the ET experience. So um, this is my story about the My Lab stuff and the abductions, not this book. So we never got to, to write that book. I oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see. I have uh, just a few more questions, and we could answer some from the chat. Okay. Um, why did you stop researching and writing the book, and why did you get out of this field? Oh, three automobile accidents. Uh, the time when they the the Draconian threatened my family to be killed, um, and. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it, I mean. How did you find out that the Draconians were uh, threatening your family? That was when I was abducted and taken into the base. Oh, I see. And so the Draconians showed me, that put me in a holographic image to show me what they were going to do to my family if I didn't show up. Wow. And that did, in fact, it was interesting because I was, after that happened, uh, I was to come back home to Las Vegas to visit um, for holiday thanksgiving and on the way there i was ran off the road by an unmarked van uh the the eyewitnesses which were truck drivers told me that the this van had and they stopped and helped me i should say uh the one uh, right right behind me but they said that they had this van had zoomed up and then moved in between the trucks and when i came out they came and pushed me off the road mm. so um then when i got home I, my my car fortunately <laughs> was wonderful i think the angels were there um my, my car went up and over into the other side and came down into the middle and it hit a uh, joshua tree that joshua trees aren't usually in between in the meridian but there was one and it, my car hit it and it was soft landing and all i did was um, mess up my bumper, which my kids came to to the uh, place and and then helped me get it pulled off. And then uh, we went on into Vegas, and I had Thanksgiving. And then when I went back home to California, um, I um, took my car over to get it repaired and get and got a rental and was going across town to take my books and my cassettes and everything to Melinda. And I got hit once more by a car, spun me around three times. That definitely military jumps out big guy jumps out and says you caused this you caused this and um so p 
people saw that it was his fault and so that you know that was taken care of and stuff but like again it wasn't hurting again i wasn't hurt uh so i i just know that they protected me but you know how long are they were going to be able to protect me and my family so i decided to quit so i quit for nine years fair but, enough fair enough I, I would always put my family first too if they told me ishmael you know stop doing what you're doing you're bringing too much information to the masses Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I shouldn't say that here. <laughs> it's like inviting them to like get this stuff. But, uh, yeah, that, that's I mean, a, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, especially now because uh, things are sh are shifting. You know, all of a sudden we are witnessing massive protection worldwide. Mm -hmm. Even with, like in comparison to even five years ago, people were still you know disappearing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the earth. Yeah. But now it's like it's it's different. Now it's 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 almost like they they no longer have um the dark side that is including the dracos they no longer have um the ability to threaten access or even execute anything anymore would you agree I, the last I, year yeah okay i agree the star seeds i believe are hands off the ones on the mission they're hands off and hands off, exactly yeah, yeah. I, because there, there is a galactic code for nine years because my galactics told me this is what you should do mm -hmm. It should stop, and I did. Exactly, makes sense. Makes <laughs> sense. Um, now, implants. I know that there are negative implants, and then is there's also positive implants, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, tell us about the positive implants. What do they entail? What are they all about? I believe the positive ones are uh, a place where they can add upgrades to you, and they do upgrade us, and they give us more information, and give us. Uh, abilities just when when you start on this mission all of a sudden your abilities will start opening up and more and more come to you and it's like your mission is this and then it changed to this and then it adds this and add to this uh i do believe that um the the implants are doing that mm -hmm. now there are um negative implants that i believe that are put in by the negative graves and like draconians and such as that uh for tracking but i don't think they even need tracking anymore all they need is your frequency so i don't even think really that many implants are being put in uh by the negatives anymore it probably are positive maybe that people are having in in your experience um in all of this did you ever hear about the red queen that operates deep in the underground um subterranean levels of the denver colorado airport oh i did not know the name but yes i know there's definitely a draconian, draconian energy there definitely without a doubt red cream that's interesting red I, cream. yeah well that's the code name for an advanced computing system that was at the level of super artificial intelligence in which the military industrial complex hence you know the interplanetary corporate conglomerate in a, in a collaboration with the dark fleet we're using to pretty much detect the uh vibrational frequency of the incoming star seeds the incoming indigos and crystal children uh mm -hmm. in a way to like monitor them and to see um what level of power that they're going to be in in as they uh you know step into their their gifts develop their abilities um and so on and so forth and the whole purpose of this uh super ai system was to pretty much assimilate as as you know ai loves to assimilate things mm -hmm. its job was to assimilate the abilities of these gifted individuals that um had these supernatural abilities that were going to be unraveling in the future um and the whole purpose of that was to create and mimic the same abilities but through uh, a cybernetic um we could say uh, android android they were gonna it was gonna create an android army that was going to supposed to be the equivalent of a superhuman or us using our abilities when we do activate and i believe that that program was aborted um because of the fact that um uh, first and foremost so it's the red queen had an army already you know it was gathering all the data in fact it, it is believed that even the red queen became so powerful um as it was connected to negative invasive ai which is a parasite that's been plaguing the cosmos for billions of years that it was in fact the source that was controlling the cabal at one point it wasn't no longer taking orders from the dark fleet or the interplanetary con conglomerate it was actually running them 
And so it became very, very dangerous to the, to the point where uh, members of the Rock Confederacy, which is an extraterrestrial program, I think I mentioned that I told you I was involved in, um, had to intervene and, of course, dismantle it uh, before it was able to assimilate the full power of the incarnated indigo crystal and rainbow adults. I guess now they're in their adult form. But, yeah, the whole purpose of that um, technology was to assimilate our superhuman abilities in order to mimic it and uh, bring us challenge uh, when the time came for our powers to activate, you know, cause some sort of a conflict there with that. And off offset the prophecies, of course. Now, that's really interesting because, you know, I do know they had a hybrid program in the, in the, in the deep underground military bases, a lot of hybrid programs. Maybe they were using the genetics, of course, for, to go with these artificial uh, and intelligence or, you know, that, that makes sense because I knew there was not a good ex hybrid program. I, I thought at some point they were going to try to bring out an army yeah. of, of cybernetic hybrids. So that it was the goal, but it was, it was dismantled. Yes. Dismantled. That's, yeah, wonderful. dismantled. That's wonderful news. I'm very glad to hear that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was supposed to be released in 2018. I guess that's when the program was supposed to be complete. According to my sources, according to the Galactics, uh, the Rock Confederacy had to step in um, from Harmonic Universe density 10, 11, and 12 in order to dismantle it because it was that powerful. Um, but we were also receiving assistance by different types of interdimensional uh, intelligences that were organic, um, like the Tritons uh, that come from planet Triton, uh, 120 you know, million light years from the Earth. Uh, and many other races that were just on it. You know, the Syrians were on it. The uh, I believe the Arcturians were on it. Uh, every, every positive race out there, every, you know, from at every level of reality, they were monitoring the situation because that was going to uh, offset the, you know, the original prophecies of, of, of us reaching completion, you know, coming into our abilities, which is something that's that they've been expecting for for millions of years. Mm. You know, they, they've been waiting for this day to come. So, yeah, it was it was a pretty, uh, pretty good defeat on it. And, you know, on our side, it was a pretty good defeat when it came to that. We won. We won that that program or we eliminated it yeah. at least from happening. We will always win. Exactly. We take us time and longer than we plan, but we will always win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it was more complex than that. You know, it was corresponding to a uh, another advanced computing system that was broadcasting from Beetlejuice. Another one bro was broadcasting from the Regal system. Uh, another one was broadcasting from uh, a different galaxy uh, known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, about thirty uh, light thirty thousand or no thirty light years, thirty thousand light years from the Earth. Sorry, thirty thousand light years from the Earth. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was um, kind of. Uh, it was out operating as a as an intergalactic network, you could say, uh -huh. uh, where you know it was invading all these galaxies. At least that was its, its intent. But thank God uh, that uh, intergalactic uh, computer cybernetic advanced network was neutralized in the nick of time. Yeah, that's great. Can I ask you a question about um, satellites and all of the satellites that are up? Well, what do you think the reason for there is? There's got to be a reason. Elon Musk has put thousands up now. And because I do night vision tours with night vision goggles, and it makes it really hard for me to <laughs> help people see UFOs because of all of satellites now. Yeah, well, well um, there is uh, two Elons, uh, first and foremost. Uh, so we have the positive e Elon that is working with the Y hats and working with Starlink and the quantum financial system, which is um, mm. being, you know, uh, implemented by the forces of light on every level of reality. And then you have the negative Elon. The negative Elon actually uh, was a clone that they use that they're using uh, with a bit of cybernetics. And that's the Elon that is associated with an interplanetary organization um, that is connected to transhumanism. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the Elon that is building Neuralink. Mm -hmm. So there are two Elons. You know, the, the positive Elon um, was used by the Earth Alliance to create the uh, the new satellite system that was uh, that is intended to take but over the airways. Yeah, to, to neutralize uh, the cabal's you know networks in order to um, 
take over the internet, take over the airwaves, so on and so forth, for oh. an event uh, that many are expecting, known as the uh, emergency broadcast system. Oh yes. So, so that's that's part of the. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. I was yeah. hoping for, but but then I got, I get very confused because I saw that part and then I saw the other one. So now it explains that there's you know, just like there, you know, two presidents and or many different types of. People. Yeah, there's also two Trumps, by the way, <laughs> but when when as as they are also in the position now, as they are in a position to arrest the clones, including the negative Trump and uh, the negative Elon. But this is where I think the bifurcation of timelines is going to take place, and okay. where there's going to be a split in reality, mm -hmm. where you know um, we're on on the positive timeline, we're only going to see the the good 45 and the good Elon. On mm -hmm. the negative timeline, uh, we're going to be witnessing the negative 45 and or, which is the one that was pushing that of course uh and the one that is you know they're, they're saying that the negative 45 is working with with um with the wef but that's the negative 45 again that was the 45 that was created by negative ai uh in order to um confuse the people but again, we, we do have so i believe that there's going to be a bifurcation and in the positive timeline uh we only get to uh witness uh, the good, you know, Elon, the good Elon, and the good forty-five. Okay. Now, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, right now, they're both coexisting, but very soon, um, it's going to be, you know, splitting. This whole thing is going to be splitting into two different time. I guess there's going to be a third one now, an in-between timeline. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. Yeah, um, there's a conversion. Uh, I've talked about this before. There's a, there's a conversion of multiverses and alternative Earths. You know. Where all of a sudden we're seeing a collapsing due to uh, the ending of a cosmic cycle. We're seeing a collapsing taking place here in our reality as I speak. <laughs> it's, mm. um, so it's going to be interesting how it all unfolds. So I see it happening for people in their dream time and astral dreams and all of these spirits as well. That we are winning battles on the other side. Mm -hmm. Definitely, mm -hmm. I could attest to that. We are. Um, let's see. So. I have two more questions, and then we could go ahead and take a few from the audience. Okay. Uh, what, what role does Hollywood play in all of this? False flags. And, and, you know, tell us about the false flags. Well, I almost think there's two Hollywoods, too. I mean, there is a group in, in Hollywood that are trying to get out the information, I do believe. Uh, mm -hmm. but then there are the ones that are uh, giving us what um, the cabal tells, us, tells them to do. So... Uh, these things are happening, so you have to tell people about it. So uh, I do believe they're very, very involved in it. And the whole thing with the taking and taking of um, CHILD and all of that in Hollywood is a huge part of it. It's a huge part of it. And I, I see that it's going to and has been being destroyed. So that takes a lot of the power away from uh, Hollywood, I think. Um, so, I do, but I do believe that there's many, many shows that are telling the truth. I'm trying to think of some of them that, that I have been watching. That just, hey, I'll give you a funny one. Resident Alien has a lot of little truth nuggets in there. It's a comedy and it's fun. Uh, it's a sci-fi show, and you can get it streaming now. I mean, and, and different shows like that. Uh, Star Trek's they have some wonderful tidbits in there awesome awesome and one uh, last question before we take some from the audience as well so tell us about your groups and what you are doing now with these groups okay so for the last 10 years i've had these groups online on virtual zoom well first i've tried different formats but now we're on virtual zoom uh until a better one comes up um and uh so I have three a week, up to 14 a month. They're different topic ones, like on the first uh, Wednesday, the Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays are usually 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock to 6 Pacific Standard Time. These are always Pacific Standard Time. The Sundays are always 12 to 3. I invite people to come in to one or two meetings and check it out and see if it's what they if they are if they're comfortable and if they'd like it. Uh, actually, I, I give them a, a week so they can go to every uh, a couple of three different groups and so they can find out what they like. 
um, you know, a lot of them about the covert abduction, MK Ultra My Lab. Uh, I have veterans group where we talk about BTSD and and so much in all of the different, not only wars, but the military itself has my lab MK Ultra in it. And people have been using these programs. People have been taken uh, during military uh, time as well as in their war and the wars and stuff. So I have that group. That's the second one Thursday of any mo every month. Um, and so I have a galactic light language where people who have, uh, have light language like me and are communicating with their galactics can come in and communicate and talk and chat with each other. It's a really unconditionally loving energy. Um, I have hybrid groups for people who are hybrids and then also hybrid groups for people who are hybrid parents. Um, I have um, target individual groups and within the target individual groups, I have many people who have had all the other experiences that are targeted. Sometimes people are targeted because they're hybrids. Sometimes people are targeted because they're experiencers, ET experiencers. So uh, it just there's different reasons why people are targeted. Um, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, I have a my lab group, um, and then every Sunday I have mixed groups. You can come in and talk to other people who are experiencers, and uh, um, as the group gets bigger, then I spread out and get more groups through a week. So right now I'm at three a week, um, and uh, on Zoom. So they can go on my website, web, excuse me, my website, starseedawakening.org, and they can uh, go to uh, the virtual groups, and they can go in and they can subscribe if they want to. But if you want, there's a trial base there that you can do as well. Or if you're on Facebook and you see my events up, just come to our group and see if it's something that you like. So it's Star Seed Awakening dot com or dot org org dot org dot org okay i'm gonna go ahead and just type that in okay um and uh awakening that's uh dot org okay i <laughs> went ahead and i put it in there in the chat as well right that I just sure. i do want to acknowledge uh, some of the galactic jedi's radiant guardians is in the house uh, galactic rose 117 is in the house learn mad sylvia foster is in the house Tony uh, Bassioli is in the house. Who else is in the house? Uh, Anna. Anna Sand Villette is in the house. David Hake, Sylvia Foster, uh, Lella Maucha, and everyone else. All 775 Galactic Jedis in the house. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. And please come and check out the group. You're going to find that you have a place that's safe to talk to people who know what you're going through. Uh, there's a many different groups so you can find a niche for yourself and don't be alone. Don't isolate. Isolation is the worst thing that you can ever do for yourself, especially if you're a targeted individual because they keep at you until they drive you crazy. If you're in a group and you've got support because we support each other, we are a family. So come and join our family. Now, um, I've, I know that when certain hybrids or star seats feel i don't want to say the word s-u-i-c-i-d-a-l you yeah. know when they exit the matrix that way uh -huh. is it because they are that thought is being put in their head by some sort of frequency omega training omega yeah that's what that's what james was telling me as well they call it the omega uh exit program right so you got the alpha program the alpha program programs people to um, um, to have, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of, um, photographic memories and, and, uh, and abilities and things like that. And then you've got the, um, the theta, let me say, I, I got it in my book here. I always forget the order it's in. Okay. So you've got the alpha program, then the beta program, which is the, the, uh, SEX program, uh, and presidential model program. Uh, the honey pots, all of these things, and the honey pots. In case people don't know, are pro, are uh, they use us women to and men to um, blackmail different politicians and, and dignitaries and things like that 
you've got the Delta program, which is the assassination program. You've got the Theta program, which is the assassinations by uh, program also by, um, uh, I don't know if I can say this all right, but, but anyway, it's a psychic assassins um, and uh, they can cause aneurysms, heart attacks, things like that. And that, I mean, those people, you know, that are doing this, don't even know they're doing it. It's their altars doing it. You have to understand if you have an altar, you are not to blame. They have programmed mind controlled you with an altar. And uh, you have no clue that's happening, even though it's happening but, in real time. No, I had no clue it was happening. I had no clue any of this was happening, especially, you know, the eight month periods of time where they had me there so they could program everything into me. I had no idea the abilities that they took from me and used my abilities to do horrific things. Um, the theta, or, or excuse me, the gamma program is deception program. Uh, altars are trained as deceivers and keep it from all the other altars. So you've got uh, many a deceiver altar that is trying to destroy all the time. That's their mission: is to stop you, destroy you, turn you into a, a crazy person. The mega program is, of course, is that other one that you, we talked about before. Yeah, because I get a, a few people that reach out to me and say, you know, I've reached the point in my life where I, I just can't handle the 3D anymore. Yeah. I'm having, you know, thoughts of myself. And I try to talk to them and say, hey, snap out of it. It's not you. It's something putting the thought in you. It's trying to control your mind. Snap out of it. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, that's why I wanted you to bring up these programs. Yeah, they, they can't isolate if they're feeling this way. They have to find help. And, and and the Omega program is not just that. It's also cutting yourself, burning yeah. yourself, self isolation. Yeah. It's also turning yourself into a drug addict or an alcoholic and things like that because all of those go down that path that they want us to go down to where we never talk. We never find out who we really are. We never realize that we can stand in our power, that we are these amazing light beings that are here on a mission. And, you know, we just need to wake up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I attest to that. And then um, what is that you're that you want to tell people about disclosure? With disclosure, you know, every... If you tell one person, they tell one person, they tell one person. If you tell 10 people and they tell 100 people, it's it's it, it's a domino effect. And disclosure will come and we can manifest it, but we have to be in the right frame of mind. If we're in the mind, frame of mind that we're victims or that uh, the other side's winning, that will not get it. We have to manifest it to happen. And it will and it can happen. Um, the more positive experience that you can bring into um you know your life uh and see the positive things you can manifest your life you can manifest and create money out of nothing it's it's amazing what you can do when you stand in your power and realize who you really are absolutely i totally agree on that that's why I always encourage people to never buy into any fear porn or anything like that, because all it does, it's, it, all, it, it causes a, a massive um, concentrating effort towards that timeline. And that's what these guys want, because they know that mind creates. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, some questions. We have a question from Galactic Rose 117. Welcome, Galactic Rose, who is in the house. She says, uh, pure character... Bowing down, saying thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's not a question. That's just a thank you. Well, thank you, Galactic Rose from Super Chat, sister. Thank you, thank you. Uh, again, guys, if you guys have questions for Misha, this is your time to ask her anything you guys want. Uh, I'm sure that some of this probably struck a chord with some of you guys. It probably resonates. So go ahead and uh, put your questions in capital letters. Let me see. Let me, okay, so we have from uh, another question from Stuart. Stuart Williams is in the house. How you doing, Stuart? Stuart, thank you so much for being here. He says, pure character riding a firework rocket disappearing away before bursting in the sky. <laughs> it's a continuation. Uh, I'm telling you, my, 
my fellow brethren here, um, Galactic Jedi's are just full of wisdom and humor. They are the <laughs> best, the best people on the planet gathered here on my platform. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Let's see. You know, um, the the other side, like on different Facebook news, all of it, are this whole thing about the solar uh, eclipse and. They're trying to bring in the fear and the whole of the, mil the military and the police and all of this. We have to counteract that. We have to counteract. Just remember that, folks. Well, that's, counteract that's with, with exactly. light energy. Absolutely. That's why I'm holding a massive global meditation on the 8th to use that. Oh. I already announced it on all my platforms. I'm hoping to get at least... Uh, well, I mean, even with the replay, of course, not everybody's going to have the opportunity to uh, tune in from uh, 10 to 11 when you know we're supposed to be in the peak of the solar eclipse but i'm hoping that we at least have about you know just a few thousand people on the live and perhaps on the replay um throughout the day of course and also if you guys can't make it another thing i wanted to mention is if you guys can't make it from 10 a.m pacific time to 11 uh a.m pacific time then do me a favor if, if you're driving or if you're in the mountain or at work just take that time take some time off from 10 30 or if you can at 10, that'd be great. From 10.30 to 11, because I believe the peak is around 11, and just you know, focus your entire energy on harnessing and calling in the solar flash, bringing in that source conscious energy, that divinity into the earth, um, as we, of course, attempt to anchor in the new earth on that day. So that's my, um, my hope for everyone here. If you guys can't make the uh, live, uh, of course, you can catch it on the replay, but please just take some time off and, you know, wherever you're at and in your own way, just do your own little, you know, contribution towards this beautiful shift that we want to create on that day. I'll be there. For awesome. sure. In spirit. That's what I'm saying. If you guys can be there in spirit, it'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. I saw some questions there. Oh, if you want to pick a question, feel free. Uh, my daughter was so gifted. The ships always, well, we go so fast I can't. But there were some, and I don't see sure. them now. They passed already. What about now? I'm rewinding it a little bit. Okay. Is there anything you feel you've learned? Whoops, gone again. <laughs> yeah, they, they go pretty fast here. Um, you know, you have the option of, uh, do you have the arrow too to move up? Let me see. I do. Okay. Oh, let me, let me, let me see. To the ones that you were yeah. reading. Yeah. My daughter was so gifted. The ships always came. Oh, my goodness. It just wants to. <laughs> um, I lost again. The ships always came. How do I help her? Uh, well, I'm not sure how old she is, but if she's old enough to come uh, to groups, um, uh, either support groups of mine or somebody else's, you should. I'll, in fact, I do. I have a teen group. I have a teen and young adult group that um, would be wonderful for her to come to. But you have to encourage her, stand alongside of her, meditate with her, um, show her, see, daughter's a gifted, the ships always come. How do I help her? Get to help her to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you feel you've learned about the benevolent ETs agenda from all your clients? Hmm. That we are really amazing beings. I mean, when they come through and they're talking, they are so honored that we are here. They are so honored that we communicate with them, I'm telling you. They are so honored. It's like they're standing in line to, to help if you ask. And that's one of the biggest things I found out, that they will help you if you ask. They will protect you. They will put protection uh, around you. They'll, your protectors are there. They, you have uh, guides and you have protectors and they're there, but they will not interfere. So you need to connect with them and let them know that um, you need need their help, you want to, to, their guidance, things like that. That's what I found out, that they're there waiting for you to, to help you. Your glasses, Indeed. 
And I just wanted to share this super chat from uh, Seth, my brother Seth. How you doing, brother? He says, a uh, hippo character collapsing to the ground as his chair breaks while the words rexed, rexed appear above him. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a riddle? Do you get that riddle? <coughs> I don't. Yeah, the galactic Jedis are full of humor here. <laughs> Well, they might be, you know, they experience a lot of things in their astral. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um. Yes, this is very important from uh, from uh, Galactic Rose. She says, pay attention to the people that are around you. I agree with that. Always be mindful of your surroundings. Crystals. Oh, somebody asked me about crystals. Okay, so um, I use, when I'm working, I use a, 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 a smoky quartz. Smoky quartz can bring out energy, energy and it can heal, heal you from it. It can stop it, it can block it. Uh, there's a couple of different them when I'm the, the Shungite, <coughs> Organite, <coughs> excuse me, Shungite and Organite are both very good for protection. I use crystal, uh, um, um, excuse me, I use uh, amethyst. Amethyst is a, a wonderful protector for, as, that I always wear. Um, but um, if you're looking for targeting protection, Shanghai Organite, um, uh, what do you call it? Magnets, different things like that are very good for that. Good advice. All right, uh, this is a, uh, okay, so we've already put her, her website for MJF. Her website is in the chat, guys. I have another website too. It's my Night Vision UFO Tours, which is, it's called uh, UFONightWatch.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, somebody says, um, Perez, you are being seen. This is coming from E M I T R Emmett, and the the answer to that question is absolutely yes. Of course, I'm being seen. You know, the Galactics are protecting me at all times. <laughs> so yeah, I'm constantly being monitored. I, I've always felt that. Like even as a kid, I always felt like I was watched by the good guys, of course, and of course by the, you know the bad guys. But in a sense, the good guys were there to protect me from the bad guys always. I've had some interesting encounters with uh, where all of a sudden I, I felt something dark around me and all of a sudden I felt like, all right, well, something else is coming in into my field. Oh, there it is. And all of a sudden, uh, as a result of that, the being of light coming in into my field, the other being of dark dissipates and just moves the other way. And I'm thinking to myself, this is interesting. I've had several experiences like that throughout my entire life knowing that there is a spiritual warfare going on mm -hmm. where the forces of light, they need me to be alive. They need me to be around, you know, here. They need me to do my work. And the forces of darkness are like, no, 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 no. Don't let this guy do his work. You know, huge threat to us. You're an Arcturian as well, aren't you? I have had a, a lifetime in Arcturus, yes. Uh -huh. I'm called a, a, a hybrid. But originally, uh, in, a, a, in my primary race is Lyran. His library, yes, yes, for sure. Um, there's someone asked about a hypnotic regression. So the website is there. If you go to the booking, that's how you can uh, uh, do a hypnosis regression, a book one with me. Um, if I could tell you a little bit about my hypnosis regressions, um, I I do regressions different than HMI Institute where I got my uh, classes and and everything like that i had that's where i got my certifications from mm -hmm. uh, but i do it multidimensionally uh, i do believe that we are multidimensional beings having a human life and that uh we are experiencing these things so when i i take people in i take them in to find out their experiences if they have trauma to heal and cut cords and cancel contracts and and uh, rebu rebuke things and get healed. 
not just to pull it up and then send you on your way. That does not help anyone. So we cut cord, I cut cords and cancel. We, I say we because I don't do it. I'm not the one that does it. The person in hypnosis, they are the ones that do their cutting the cords and canceling the contracts and, uh, and binding and revoking and things like that. So uh, my regressions are multidimensional regressions, not just a, a, you know, a hypnosis. Um, so I just want to acknowledge uh, Deidre Swan, who uh, I guess you've already answered a question about which crystals to use to protect yourself. Uh -huh. But I want to acknowledge her super chat as well. Thank you so much, sister, for being here. Um, we have this question as well. Um, is there anything you feel you've learned about the benevolent ET agenda from all your clients? Well, I mentioned earlier what I felt, but so if there's anything else, let me think. Um, uh, that they want to talk to you and they want, they want to communicate with you and they want you to realize who you are. It's very important that you do find out who you really are, that you're not just this human person that you're, so it, it is important in some way or other you find out your connection to your galactics. Because once you find out your connections, you become who you are. You become the galactic that you are, that, uh, that are here on a mission doing your, your, your work and uh, helping and raising the consciousness and such. So That's, That is so true. We, we are um, multidimensional beings and therefore we have galactic avatars operating simultaneously. Why we're down here on the earth, all time is happening at once, guys. So I could attest to that, you know, that we are the commanders. We are, it's almost like our higher self is trying to communicate with us and we just have to allow it. 100%, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I do also believe and I see it in regressions where the lives affect each other. So when you, uh, well, in a couple ways. So when you're, you're having a life, that is affecting this one, it might be slightly different than this lifetime. It might come in a dream time thing. And it's you're experiencing that. And something changes in that life can change in this life and vice versa. Also, when they use the MK Ultra programming, they pull up your past lives or your parallel lives and they will pull, uh, pull out abilities, tech, uh, um, abilities that you have, uh, lives where you were maybe really not a good person so that they can use those and program them in the altars. That's how they, de they design the altars specifically suited for the individual by their past lives or their parallel lives that they should have already been able to heal. And that's one of the things in hypnosis and you need to heal those lives that uh, you were uh, a negative source and you need to forgive yourself and definitely forgive yourself as as an a, a, a mk ultra alter person with alter i should say um how does someone how does somebody know if they if they are were mk ultra if they had alters or if they have alters um well they're going to have nightmares they're going to have phobias. They're going to be afraid of different things. Um, they, I mean, I have like all kinds of lists about MK Ultra and all the different lists and such. But just to name a few, um, they're, they're, they do things out of character for themselves. They dress out of character. Uh, they, um, they, when they go shop, <laughs> this is one of the big ones women might notice. When you're in an altar and you go shopping, the altar buys the things that they want. In my case, it was all slutty clothes. And then when I came out of the altar and I looked through my closet, basically, and I went, I don't remember by that. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I mean, I ended up throwing away a bunch of stuff. That So whatever that altar is uh, connected to, which program they're connected to, that's what they'll buy. So you'll have that kind of thing as well. They'll have, um, like I said, phobias of, of snakes and of, of, of darkness, of uh, being closed in closed places, um, um, just all kinds of things like that. You, you, you just don't fit in. Now, that, those, 
those things are the MK Ultra. If you're um, an experiencer, you may not fit in. Or if you're a star seed, you may not fit in with your family. With all of this, you're not going to fit in with your family. You, you, your friends are going to feel feel different to you. Uh, you'll be you'll be different to them, I should say. So there's just ugh, there's so many, 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 many. I'm talking. There's 50, for instance, characteristics of of the MK Ultra uh, altar and programming. So this other question we have experienced. Sleep is, does that indicate we have been infected? If this is a, uh, you've done it more than once, it's been a, quite a few times. If there's been some energy in the room, some, some, uh, whether it was a, you saw them or you felt them or you sensed them, uh, that would be paralysis. And it, all of the ETs use paralysis. Now, I was told one time during a regression, a man was asking an ET, um, why they paralyzed them and and they said well you broke one of our people's arms <laughs> on another experience he woke up uh, or he was not in complete paralysis and he grabbed and broke the arm and so they said so they had to put him into paralysis to protect them and to protect us because if they're trying to take us physically or even astrally uh, they, they can't do it if we're like ranting around or jumping or screaming or carry on. So, Okay, fair enough. Now, I do want to address a question that I saw. Somebody asked if Jesus Christ was Thoth, and the answer to that is no. Jesus, yeah, Thoth was a part reptilian through his father Enki, Enki Poseidon. Um, and Jesus had no reptilian in him. He was a pure descendant of the original seraphine angelic bloodline. That could be traceable back to the original guardians, the benev the benevolent Elohim, the righteous Elohim. So I just wanted to share that real quick because I I did have somebody ask if if Jesus was was thought, and the answer to that is no. Jesus and thought are two different entities. I'd like to say hi to all the people who recognize me and have been saying hi. <laughs> Don't want to go through the whole list there, but hi. Nice to see you. And if you lost me, uh, I was kicked out of Facebook because I talked about child trafficking. And oh, it's okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, I could probably. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. But I was kicked out and I came back as Johnson, J O H N S O N. So if you can't find me, look under Misha, M I E S H A, J O H N. 52. Let me write that down. That was at 152. You can cut that. I'm sorry. It's okay. No worries. So around 152, 25. <laughs> but it happens, you know. Uh, that's why there's a good old editing, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. That was my only slip. Uh, there's a greeting, virals. What is it? Uh, somebody's asked about expand on virals. I didn't miss that. It was right after that, my oh thing. Uh, I, I don't know. My, I don't know anything about Wright Patterson, by the way. I mean, I know it is one of the bases, and um, but uh, I don't know. But somebody was asking me something, and I <laughs> lost it. Oh, it's easy to lose. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Somebody said I'm reading text versions of people's icons. Well, if they super chat me, I am going to share it. As long as it's not negative, guys, of course. Oh. <laughs> I am a funny guy, guys. All right. I am a funny guy. Unintentionally, of course. <laughs> You've got to have a sense of humor in this. You've got to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to just tell you this, and this is another thing that people didn't know about me. When you get to know me on a personal level, like say if you hang out with me and you're my neighbor, you come to understand that I am very goofy. I do things that just make people laugh because I am so abstract minded that when it comes to the simplest things like common sense, it goes over my head. And I don't understand jokes, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm pretty, pretty hilarious myself. <laughs> 
Oh, there it is. Could Misha expound on vrils, or different types of REM clones or namas? Okay. That is a infinity goddess. Okay. Um, okay, now I, I don't know too much about the vril. I mean, I know what it is. I know the vril were the German uh, and the Nazis, and they were connected with uh, the... Uh, a group of uh, aliens, I think, from Aldebaran or something, but that's really all I know. Uh, REM is in REM sleep, I guess, is what they mean. Different types of REM is, I guess, what they're talking about. So I'm not sure if maybe they can tell me. Clones, okay. So, yes, I do believe there's, oh, in my regressions, lots and lots and lots and lots of clones come up. It's so much clones come out. That it's hard to tell sometimes what's an altar and what's a clone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, because clones um, just need a fragment of your of your soul to even be made, uh, whereas um, they can, you know, they can have uh, cybernetic bodies and things like that. That's my understanding. I'm not my specialty though. But what I've learned is there is clones, and there's clones walking. Oh my goodness, we have a lot of non people here, non lot non 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 people, shall we say, or um, clones walking amongst us, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Which well, I think we're going to access for the Z O M B <laughs> I E. Somebody keeps asking me, what is under the Great Sphinx of Giza? That's a very good question. And that's just a, another mystery that has uh, perplexed the minds of many scholars, explorers, uh, mystics throughout the centuries. Um, it is believed that a great deal of records, some even say in its physical format, it could actually be the halls of records, which contains all the information that has ever happened uh, throughout, you know, what is it? 14.5 billion years of history, going back to 14.5 billion years, which is a lot from the beginning of our universe, supposedly. But our universe actually goes back to 40 billion years ago. Yeah, the science has it all wrong. Our universe has been around for 40 billion years, but I don't know where they get that 16 or 15.5 billion years. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's relatively, when it comes to the cosmic time, that's relatively just recently, you know. Uh, but that's just my perspective um, based on my understanding of the multiverse and older universes and younger universes and where we stand in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> Let's see. Somebody asked me about, is that okay if I read it? You said, yeah. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Right. Uh, can you help someone who can't seem to go under hypnosis? Now, it depends on two, about two or three things. First of all, when you decide that somebody's going to be your hypnotherapist, you need to vet them completely and make sure that they are on the same timeline, same track you're on. For instance, uh, you wouldn't want to go to somebody who only deals in the spiritual parts of things, uh, you know, a, a quantum healer or something like that. If you want to talk about secret space work or super soldier, it's not going to, you're not going to get in there. Now, I've had many, many, many people who said they could not be hypnotized and they can be hypnotized. But and but you you have to know the right words, the right verbiage. It all matters. It all matters. Uh, so if you um, so also there are um, say ten percent of the population who cannot be hypnotized. So it's possible you might not be able to be hypnotized, but if you can imagine or visualize anything in your mind. And um, just to, you know, to if somebody said, imagine a tree and what kind of tree it is, you should be able to be, hip, be hypno, hypnotized. You, you should. Uh, if you can quiet your mind down enough to meditate, you should definitely be able to be hypnotized. Absolutely. I agree. I don't know anything about Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. Fifty-one stories down. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I've never heard about that before. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, Sylvia Vidal is asking, how can you tell if you have been implanted? Okay. You may have um, headaches. If it's implanted in the, in the head someplace, you have, might have headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have um, scoop marks uh, around your body because if you've got scoop marks, you've probably been implanted. Um, because they use the scoop markers to put in with the genetic implant so that they can put it into your body and it will, we won't, your body won't reject it. So if you've got scoop marks, you more than likely have been implanted as well as, um, um, if you're like a, like you have a bump or something, uh, it's hard, it has a surface on it, um. If you feel like you're ringing in your ear, you've probably been implanted. Oh, let's see if anything else comes pops in. There's many reasons. <laughs> That's all I can think of right now. Oh, you talk to? You've probably been implanted. You're here in a galactic. They communicate with you. They speak light language to you, or they or um, they. Um, communicate with you verbally um, they very well those that could be a positive implant and it's interesting because sometimes people have had positive implants in the back of the head and sometimes people have had negative ones so I, I can't really tell you I, I will also tell you if you want to find out and you live in California go see Stephen Steve uh, Colbert he has equipment to scan to find out if you have implants He's on. Yeah, I've heard of that equipment. Yeah, Steve. He's able to scan you. I can scan you. Mm -hmm. Colbert, C O L B E R N, I think. Or he, he's one of my friends on Facebook. Awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> somebody asked if I was a clone. Well, I tell you guys what, I've been regressed <laughs> by Misha, and she could attest that I'm not a clone. A clone. Not a clone. He's pretty, pretty special guy, actually. Really amazing, and you should listen to him because he's experienced it and it's very good that's all i can say because it's always private yeah and i appreciate that you were the first one to ever regress me and um i do tell you this i had a lot of confirmation after that regression stuff and, and also I, I was able to understand a lot of pieces of the puzzle that i couldn't get you know i couldn't put together mm -hmm. but you allowed me to to you know go into my subconscious mind connect with my altar and one of my altars mm -hmm. and um, good information came through. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. I just listened to it again today because I just wanted to remind myself of it. I was, wow. Yeah, very much. So listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. Mm, looking for maybe just one more question. I know uh, it's already been two hours. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, it's six o'clock. No, it's eight o'clock in uh, Vegas. Uh, we are Pacific uh, time zone, which is awesome. Okay, so just one more question, guys, and then we're going to go ahead and um, end the show for today. But thank you, Misha. You are amazing, and I, I appreciate your work, by the way. Uh, you're helping so many people, you know, hybrids, contactees, experiencers, um, super soldiers, sleeping super soldiers. Mm -hmm. You're helping all kinds of people. Let's see. I'm just looking for one, one good question. Oh, I don't have any of my cards. Okay. All right. I think I'll take this last super chat from Truth Seeker Forever. Ishmael, does she have any knowledge of aphantasia, mind blind? Is it an implant? Do you know what that is? Have you ever heard of aphantasia? No, I haven't. Not, not. But there's a lot of stuff out there I haven't heard of, for I guarantee you. Um, but I'm sorry, I, I, I have not heard of a, a mind blind. I, I mean, a mind blind almost also sounds like some of the uh, implants that are put in for people to forget about their experience or um, alters to be blocked, things like that. So it might be that. I don't know. That's the closest I can figure. So somebody says that uh, Julie Lind paid for a super chat. Did I answer it? Where's Julie Lind? <laughs> oh, I don't see it. I see Truth Seeker. 
Tony Lynn. I just want to make sure I get her super chat, and then that's it. I'm looking for Julie Lind. I see Deidre, Deidre, I'm sorry, Deidre Swan. Um, oh, okay, Misha, what is your moral perspective on clones? Okay, or something that you should not do? Hmm. What is my perspective on clones or what I should not do? What is your moral perspective on clones? It's the first part of her question. Okay, well, my moral perspective uh, on clones is uh, they're clones. They're not us. They're not real. They're they're not they're not part of the divine order. They're um, they're not a sovereign being. Unfortunately, themselves they may w feel like they are us. And I've been found out I had clones too. In fact, I had people tell me about the clones they talked to about talked to that said they were me. But I'm sorry for them. But they're not sovereign souls. Um, I, I don't know. I just can't, I can't, that's just all I think. I can't, I can't really give you any more than that. I, that's just how I feel. Uh, does every celebrity or mainstream, uh, you know, person that is famous and politician have a clone? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but politicians. Especially <laughs> like, the politicians, of course. Yes, there's you know, there's some people out there that have made it a life work to get the information out about clones. Marshall mm -hmm. comes to mind. Um I can't think of his last first name or something, but he, he comes to mind. So there are people that you can find this answers out. They're out there. All right, I think that is it. I couldn't find her super chat. I apologize for that. I Rewanded the whole thing all the way from the top and went all the way to the bottom. And I think I got all the super chats that I maybe she saw. could write something so you know who, she, where she, what she okay, so, Oh, are implants positive or negative? Uh, Bo, Ben, uh, we did answer that earlier. Oh. Some are negative and some are positive. Now, the positive ones are intended to upgrade you, they're intended to install more information, give you more downloads, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, now you did mention so before I end. You did mention um, the Alpha program. The Alpha program is when they give people photographic memory, right? And part of the programming and you building the altars and all of that. Is that a positive program? Oh, no. no. Okay. None of those programs I told you were part positive. Those yeah, all no, my okay, let's see. okay. So none of them are positive. They're, they're all. Uh, programs that were initiated by the military industrial complex. But remember, they steal all the terminology from ancient. So alpha is a positive. I don't know exactly what it is, but many of the omega is even positive, but they steal it and use it and make it twist it around and make it something bad and evil. Or oh, yeah, I think I found her super chat. Hold on. I think I found it. Is this is it this one? Let's see. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've been hearing what sounds like Earth's frequency in my left ear all the time. Sometimes super loud. What do you think? Uh, well, okay. Well, what I think is you are being communicated with and you need to meditate and tell them to slow down and tell you what they want. What they want to tell you, they have. What they want to tell you something. So when frequencies happen and stuff, they, they, they a lot of different galactic groups come in uh, with a very fast, high frequency, and they tell them to slow down and give me what, show me what you want, what you need to know. Makes sense. All right, and I think that is it. Um, Misha Johnson, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Tell about my books and things. Yes. Oh, yes, please. Tell us about your books and where can people reach you. Now, okay. I will be putting all your links in the description just to let everybody know. Okay. <clears throat> they can get my books on uh, my website and I sign it and send them. And uh, often the Galactics come through with a message when they do sign it. So I can do it that way. Uh, I have three books. I have uh, they weren't butterflies. This is my story of my as a survivor of the MK Ultra and the Monarch program. Uh, that goes into my missing periods. It goes into my childhood. It goes into all of it. And of course, I showed earlier that I have the covert abductions 
Uh, that's also on my website. Um, I have this galactic um, genealogy planet of origins. It's a book with many, many different types, colored pictures of ETs. And I also have a chart at the in the book that you can do a reading with a pendulum and find out your own galactic planets of origin or your family's planet of origin. And then you find out in here, you'll see who they are, what a little bit of their history and characteristics of them. So you can find out what your planets of origin are. I do those readings online for people, a galactic planets of origin. I also do um, my oracle cards. I have two oracle decks. I've been pretty busy. I have two oracle decks. Um, oh, that one's upside down and stuff, but there are um, all kinds of messages in them. I have an ET one, and I have a, um, an extraterrestrial, an imaginable one. And I do readings with those, oracle readings uh, with those as well. And I do full readings of the galactic and the oracle cards so that you can find out what your planets of origin are. You can find out what your missions are. You can find out what's going on in your experience um, from childhood and things, uh, experiences and all of that as well. And uh, I do the night vision tours with night vision goggles here in Las Vegas. If you're ever in Vegas, come. You can do it through Airbnb or you can contact me on my website and come and join uh, um, to a night vision tour where I vector in UFOs so people can see the UFOs beyond the satellites and communicate with them. Thank you for sharing that. Now, somebody, I believe somebody captured uh, Julie Lynn's question. Okay. And uh, her question was about clones. Are they negative or positive? I think that could be her question. We answered that. Yeah. Uh, they are both. I, I, both? I don't believe they're okay, negative or positive. I, I don't like that word with clones because, um, but clones are used in negativity, shall we say. They're used in more of the negative things. Uh, I could attest to that. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that the clones themselves are negative um, per se. <laughs> They, they don't know what they're doing because they're just program life forms. That's all. Program life forms. Exactly. And I like the grays. Yeah. They only have a yeah. set. What was that? By grays? I don't like the grays. The little robotic ones. Not the the robotic problem. grays. They're not negative or positive. They just, and, and many races use those little robotic grays. They're kind of on the market for people to use uh, yeah. different gray races. Even our galactics have them on board their ships. Mm -hmm. They use them as as little R two D twos. Yeah, R two D twos. R two D twos makes they have sense. Better life there than they do other places for sure. <laughs> also, if you guys want to ask me more questions, I do have a free forum on my website, ourcosmicorigin.com. dot um, I go on there every every few days and I interact and I answer questions. So if you guys have more, further questions, you could always address those in my forum ourcosmicorigin.com and I will be putting Misha's links all of her links in the description if you guys want to catch it on the replay and also uh, if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe uh, next week I'm going to have uh, Sarah Berksman uh, Cosme um, who I thought was coming this week but I um, actually had scheduled her for the 30th I was confused there so she is uh, she was the student of Dolores Cannon and she does similar work um, to uh, Misha, except she uh, doesn't do regression. She does QHHT, which is a different method, of course. And then the following week, uh, I'm going to have Caroline Corey. Caroline Corey has been in the disclosure community for quite some time. A huge film director and producer, has been on Gaia, uh, Ancient Aliens, among other shows, and she's going to be sharing uh, information with us as well the following weekend. So I just wanted to let everybody know that um you know we we have some interesting people coming just like misha herself who was who is fascinating in in the work that she does and again thank you so much for what you do misha you are helping so many people thank you and so are you <laughs> thank you for all the work you do yes we're, we're all a team. we're all working together yeah we're all a team absolutely all right well may the god force be with you all always and we'll see you guys monday night for the white hat 
update report. Bye. Yes, Ricky, just get a hold of me on my website. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm going to put her website in the description. Do you want to just say it one last time? Yes, it's the, uh, starseedawakening.org. S T A R S S E E D A A W A K E N I N G dot org. And that's where you can book a regression and every, and the sessions and everything else, the books and all of that. And of course, and most important, the support groups. Yes, and those are free, right? The support groups? The support groups are they're very inexpensive. They're, they're, if you you can come for uh, three or so free. But then after that, they're $22 a month to cover my expenses for as many as up to 14 groups a month you can come to. You can come to all of them. Okay. A lot of people do. <laughs> well, I'm sure that the, you know they are helping a lot of people uh, recover and heal their traumas. And that's more important than anything. So thank you so much for your yeah. work. All right, Misha, you have a beautiful evening over there in uh, Vegas. Okay. And uh, we will see you next time. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.